All right, it's Thursday, April the 30th, 2020. It's still Studio Ghibli week. And today we're going to be doing a crayon drawing of my neighbor Totoro. I love using crayons. This is a classic 64 color Crayola crayon box with built-in sharpener. I actually am going to be using this little guy from a Creator Color set as well as the built-in sharpener for today's drawing. We're going to be using a number of crayons. My go-to and favorite crayon is the Crayola Black Crayon. And these have been sharpened with not only the built-in sharpener on the box, but also with uh, my Creator Color stainless steel one. So we're going to get right into this drawing. This is going to be a color drawing. So we're going to kind of just kind of block out some shapes here and figure out like the general shape of our Totoro, which is going to be here. I'm going to be taking up all this space here and just so a nice big kind of potato kidney bean shape here for the main head. Okay, and then we're going to put one body of the kid on here and then another one for the kid down here. So I'm just lightly drawing these in and putting these as placeholders for a lot of information. Okay. All right. So this is going to be the chest of our Totoro. And I'm going to kind of figure out where I'm going to put his nose. I think it's going to go right here. Okay, and then the little his little mouth while he's asleep. A ball shut. Boom. Okay, and then I have like I'm using this outside shape here. That I marked out and then I'm going to come up with one ear here and then we'll put the other one somewhere over here yeah just like that And we're going to start filling in some of this fur here. Just like that. So right now we have a dozing Totoro. Give his fur back here. And he has these little like whiskers that come out so we'll put a little note one two three and then one two three yeah just underneath the eye and these are kind of kind of narrow And they're tapers, so they're going to be thicker at the base, closest to the face, and then as they go out, they're going to get narrower. Okay. Chest. A little fur. Kind of looks like my dog now when he's asleep, when he's not terrorizing our household. All right, so those are our total head. So again, I use a, a sharpener to really get a nice sharp tip for my crayon. And, you know, over the years I've tried to use different crayons. Man, let me tell you, Crayola has the formula down. So what I'm doing now is kind of indicate where I'm going to put darker colors here. This area here is going to be lighter. Okay, and then 
I'm gonna figure out where. We'll put one of his little. I don't know what these are, honestly. But I think they're little arrow things. Who knows? No one's really ever explained to me what those things, what these things are, but. Kind of lightly sketch those in. Okay, over here we're gonna have. This is gonna draw the head. Um, the little sleeping girl. That's gonna. Kind of occupies this space here. Figure out where she's gonna go. And we'll put her head like right here. So I'm just drawing it to kind of a generic circle. Pigtail. Boom. Shoulder. Give her, give her eye. And then eyebrow as she's resting. Her ear. Boom. And she's just enjoying a nice facial map of fur, you know. She's knocked out and she's got fur on her face. Shoulder, hand, Dress. It's a very interesting thing seeing the impact this movie had on a lot of people. Positive impact. For He's just knocked out on Totoro's chest and just loving life. Okay, one child down, one more to go. And so the other child is gonna be kind of Nestled down here, and let's make this his arm coming forward. Little claw, another claw. Yeah. All right. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Bianca. I hope you guys are doing well. Okay, so next step. 
All right, there we have kind of our sleeping Totoro. It's good to go. Very peaceful. Very peaceful. I'm going to put the other kid kind of like right here. Another happy sleeping child. The older sister. Who is just knocked out, enjoying the comfort of the arms of our Totoro. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you? And he's kind of sleeping on his tail. And I'll put his other foot or other leg down here. Her leg kind of coming out this way. Yeah. The sock and a little shoe. Okay. And then we'll add just some indications of where the dark areas are going to be. Because we're going to add some color to this drawing.
you know, they, I've been wondering about possibly getting a big giant Totoro pillow. You know, you kind of see them. They're available out there, I guess you might say. Okay. And maybe we'll put maybe he's in some foliage. We'll put some indications of like trees or le- big leaves. How about that? Leaves and grasses. All right. Etc. Hmm. Comfortable. Some green foliage down here. Yeah. Maybe some curtains of mosses and stuff coming down. Some ferns, maybe. Yeah. And all I'm doing is just using the, the really cool attributes of the crayon is that the more pressure I put, the larger and wider my line, the lighter I press, the fainter and sharper my line. Okay? So keep that in mind when you are using crayons, is that they're not just for little kids. I mean, you can do some amazing things with crayon. So I've sketched out now, just using a crayon, um, where I want to put um, you know, some of my information, my leading information here, so. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to use a gray crayon here to kind of shade and start coloring in my Totoro. Is I want to use, this is a broken crayon, unfortunately, it, 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 it broke on me today. So when I use this crayon to just get the basic color of my Totoro down, I'm gonna use just a distant grip, as distant as I can get with a broken crayon. And I'm going to apply a middle tone For my Totoro, okay? And I'm gonna use tones, guys, to create three-dimensional kind of form. Notice how I'm doing this. I'm putting darker values kind of around of his muzzle. I'm gonna use darker values over here, closer to the top of his hairline. This is going to create dimension. See this? And I'm just using one direction for right now, but I'm going to you start going in different directions and I'm using the tooth, the slight tooth that I have in this, this sulfite paper to create those dimensions. Now I'm going to add more pressure and create darker tones. See how I, I made a note here where I want to have darker tones here, right? I'm going to do the same thing here. And 
And I'm going to use this to the best of my ability to create those darker values. And I can also go through with a black crayon now and also help create those darker tonal values that I want. Now I'm going to go through now and just kind of add a little bit more pressure. Not as dark as... I don't want to go too dark. But I'm keeping the space between my shaded areas pretty tight. And I'm using more of a flat surface. Okay, here's this tail. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's from My, T my Neighbor Totoro. It's like a, it's one of his first movies, Hayao Miyazaki's first movies. It's a kids movie, geared towards kids. And it's not as um, scary as some of the movies that he put out later, like Princess Mononoke, or even Spirited Away. Yeah, it's okay, Jen. I know you didn't mean to. So now I'm going to do more vertical lines here to kind of meet these, see how they made these notes here, where I want to put darker tones. Now I'm using kind of heavier shading and using multiple directions to create those value changes. I'm gonna make this darker, just like so. And directional lines too as well. Also going to go in with some of this black and just darken these two as well. And kind of blend. See that? And this, this same technique you can use for all kinds of wax-based media. So you, this same methodology that I'm showing you works also with colored pencil, another wax-based medium. So right now I'm blending black over the gray, creating more shadows and contrast in the middle values, if that makes any sense. I hope it does. Okay, again, this is just crayon. An overlooked, or much overlooked medium, I believe. Like, oh, that's just for kids. No, actually. Master artists from all over the world and stretching through time have used crayon. So don't make the mistake in thinking that this is just a medium reserved for small children. It's not. All right. Hmm. Mm hmm. Oh, 
little sea green in here for his little marks on his chest. Could be wrong. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm not really a big fan of my voice, but I absolutely hate hearing myself talk, but I appreciate it. I'm going to fill in the, the claws here. All right. We're just going to fill their faces in with a little bit of peach. I don't really have a flesh tone crayon. That's what my wife said. That's for another box. But we'll just do this for right now. Okay. Again, um, what's cool about crayons is... We don't really... The art stores are kind of closed right now, folks. I get that. But, and this is a cool but, you can buy crayons at the grocery store. They are available at the grocery store. All right. Gonna do the orange. I haven't watched my neighbor told it on so long. And I forget the characters' names, unfortunately. So I'm gonna leave a little space of white at the top of this dress to show light reflection. And we're gonna do kind of a a earthy clay colored brown for her hair, which is this is burnt sienna for her hair. like that. Fun, fun, fun. And for our older sibling, we're going to be using sepia for her hair, burnt orange for the straps of her dress, and maize for her shirt. And because she's kind of covered up a lot by our Totoro, I'm not gonna get the see much of her shirt. Her dress on the other hand. Again, these are crayon this crayon set, a box of the classic box of 64. You can find them at your local Luckies or Safeway. They are there. I've looked. Trust me. So again, like these, there's art supplies out there if you look hard enough. There really are. They don't always have to be fancy watercolor sets or color pencil sets. They can be store bought from your local grocery store. So the same thing that I'm, I do with like a lot of my pencil drawings, I want to chunk her hair a little bit, just a little bit. I mean, it's an anime, so everything's kind of flat. Again, closer to the hairline. Gonna be darker colors. Further away, a little bit lighter. Okay. All right. And then we'll use kind 
of a kind of a generic green tone to show some of some shadows. I know it seems weird. I'm sure my wife Jen, who's watching this, is like, "What are you doing?" But I'm just gonna use this. Show some middle tone. There. That's fun. Shadows. And you can just overlay colors, which is kind of cool. Just like so. It is awful fun drawing with color pencil. Lots of fun. All right. We're doing good. So far, so good. All right. Now, maybe put in a little context here. Let's give this one some bittersweet colored shoe. There we go, that's fun. Shadow. And we're good. Sakura in May, that's right. That's right. Yep. Favorite scene is when Sakura calls May stupid. No, she doesn't like that at all. Do some foliage and I tell you every time I do color I defer to the person who sees color way 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 better than me and that would be my wife and um, she's not here right now but I'm gonna do maybe not that one just to frame this out, I'm going to do some greens with maybe some blues. And then we will be done. So what I'm going to do is maybe put some lighter colors behind May. I'm just going to keep this really sketchy. Just 
just like my foliage is behind. Because what's cool is I can always go over it with more greens and darker greens and blues. Maybe I'll frame Totoro's face in like more of a blue green. And again, we're keeping things, I want to keep kind of things loose over here so that they're not competing with my focal point, which is my Totoro and the kids, right? So right now I'm just kind of sketching in, I don't know, plant life falling behind them, blue greens, keeping it really loose. can also always go in and blend things in later. screen. I like that. Let's go with that. Now, this is for my major leaves, blending them with the blue. Such a peaceful scene. Right? Lots of fun. Okay. Last thing I'm gonna do is kind of give some in some line and direction to like him, the Totoro, kind of crushing certain aspects of this foliage with so black crayon. There we go. Go through, spend a little time outlining our boy.
All right. So here is our completed drawing of Totoro with Sakura and Mei taking a nap in the sun. I highly recommend that you guys do the same thing today. It's a beautiful day outside. Get outside if you can. I want to thank you guys for joining me today. I know you have a lot of options to do with your day, but thank you again for joining me. Um, tomorrow we're going to be doing requests. I'll be fulfilling a request. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, I'll be putting out a post on Instagram asking for ideas. It'll be the last of the drawings for Studio Ghibli Week. Next week is going to be Star Wars. So stay tuned, because next week is May the 4th. Um, thank you again. Stay home, stay safe, have a blessed rest of your day, and make art every day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.